It's finally time to talk about the number one threat in the Dead Space universe, the Brethren Moons. But a question remains, what are they and how did they actually come to be? What is going on y'all? Interested in a little bit of lore? Well, today we've got one of the creepiest apex necromorphs around. Before we get to that though, if this is your first time visiting my channel or watching one of my videos, smash that sub button because if you find this stuff interesting and you're already here, it's free and I've got way more videos planned very shortly. Tag that Notre Dame bell if you want to be updated when I post as well. Okay, so back to the topic at hand. I have a theory on where the Brethren Moons come from. Obviously, it may not be canon as it wasn't written as we never really got Dead Space 4, but all the species must come from somewhere. So make sure to stick around towards the end of the video for that. As always, however, let's start from the beginning. In our society today exists a paradox that we cannot explain. Or really, there are several horrifying options and really only a few good options that explain it, but they still kind of sow a seed of doubt for our future. Where is everyone? And I don't mean like you, me, or humanity, but where are all the other species? We have been listening to the cosmos with radios for quite some time now, and we have been observing space for probably a couple hundred thousand years. But barring any hearsay and conjecture, we have so far not seen any other species from another planet or even picked up that anyone may be out there. Now, whether the government has knowledge of this is beyond me, but for the common man and woman, nothing has been found. The Fermi Paradox basically reasons that there is something called the Great Barrier. Either our species has not encountered this barrier, or we have passed it. If we have passed it, then the Great Barrier would be something like our cells going from prokaryotic to eukaryotic. Maybe it's exceedingly strange for a cell to incorporate another cell to power it. Or perhaps the amino acids that make up our cells just simply do not form on other planets and there must be like a perfect ratio. If this is the case, then supposedly it's smooth sailing for humanity from this point on. But now exists the more terrifying prospect. We haven't hit the barrier and it's coming up on humanity. Maybe a species becomes too advanced and ends up ultimately dying of starvation and spreading their resources too thin. Maybe they become spacefaring and then, you know, they just fill the solar system with war, ultimately knocking them back down to the Stone Age. Or maybe they develop some new type of energy, try to utilize it, and then blow up their whole planet. If this is the case, then humanity has got a lot to worry about. But ultimately, this means that we are either the first or just another species heading towards destruction. But what form does this destruction take? The Brethren Moons. This could be the answer to the Fermi Paradox that exists in our universe. A species rises, becomes spacefaring, and then is wiped off the map by an apex species. Before we jump into that though, let's figure out why a species would blindly walk into a meat grinder and not stop and think that, you know, something might be going on here that's leading me to do this if they're so intelligent. At the start, the Brother Moons will send out a marker called the Black Marker. This marker is shot out into space and will typically land on a planet. For Earth, the Black Marker was encased in an asteroid and it hit the Yucatan Peninsula which was responsible for wiping out the dinosaurs. The marker itself is going to contain a signal put on it, or really put out I should say, by the Brother and Moons. The signal is going to be direly important to an intelligent species perhaps millions of years later. This signal does a couple of things, but to start it begins to guide the species towards higher intelligence. Over time, minute changes are made to the species and they are molded into a spacefaring race. This would explain why the dinosaurs existed for hundreds of millions of years but never became an intelligent race. It was only when the mammals were given a chance did humanity arise and become quite possibly the smartest species to ever walk the earth. Eventually, this species will begin to use up all of its resources. Being that they are spacefaring, they will then turn to planets and systems to satiate their need for fuel. Eventually, they will begin to settle the other planets and moons. Invariably, the species will do what it's always done and begin to reproduce. Eventually, these small settlements will turn into cities, then colonies, then the planet will officially be conquered and used as a foothold for that actual species, but old habits die hard and they need to have resources and this need will actually never go away. By the way, just as a heads up, I use the word species a lot because I'm not trying to be, I'm not saying it's human and I'm not saying it's Fatal Volantians, I'm just saying in general, if there was another creature out there, it's just it's easy to use species. Anyways, so back on track. Then, as if almost divinely, the marker will be backtracked. 
Someone, somehow, whether guided or just by dumb luck, will happen upon this marker. The signal that has been guiding the species the whole time is now able to be utilized by them for something that they desperately need, power. The electromagnetic waves put off by the black marker can power colonies, homes, machinery, whatever they would need. In the resource strap time for them, this would obviously be of great importance. The next step would seem to be the most obvious to you and I, replication of the black marker. This replication process for the more intelligent of them would be rather easy. A scientist in Dead Space 2 is quoted as saying, it's almost like it wants us to figure it out. The signal produced has made this particular species able to understand just enough so that they can create more. Eventually, this new miracle red marker will be made and replicated over and over. The markers will spread to all corners of the territories, powering whatever they need to power. In humanity's case, not only was this marker useful to them, but it also spread because of religious purposes. Classic humanity. Anyways, then something begins to happen. Perhaps it's the intention of the original marker, or maybe aberrations in the red marker, but the signal is altered. The signal will now put out a dementia vibe. This will cause the surrounding species to slowly go insane. A few members here and there until rapidly the situation begins to devolve. Once it gets to the point of complete anarchy, the species will then begin to kill itself off at an alarming rate. Necromorphs will aid in this disease as the signal will control dead tissue at a molecular level. Eventually, what was once supposed to save them has now doomed them to extinction. So what are the Brethren Moons then? When a planet has been mostly converted into necromorphs and their proximity to the marker is within range, this begins what is known as a convergence event. During this event, Somehow, the marker is able to fling billions of creatures far up into the stratosphere. When they begin to collect, they turn into one creature. This creature will also include chunks of the planet's crust, as well as the marker that began the convergence event. Once the marker has reached the center of the conglomeration, the creature will become sentient and living. The creature itself is highly intelligent and near immortal. Isaac is considered to be a very bright individual, but during the events of Dead Space 3, The Awakening, the moons were able to trick Isaac into not warning Earth of their approach. But before we get too deep into that, what does that mean for the species that has invested so much time and effort into the marker? Obviously, extinction. The species is nothing more than pigs on a farm to the moons. They will find every moon, planet, ship, wherever a marker has been built and consume all living and non-living individuals. In the Brethren Moon's eyes, a species was grown and harvested purely for their purposes. The moons, in mind, almost appear psychopathic in nature. It is said that when they are speaking to Isaac, they speak in a very calm demeanor and do not appear moved by the plight of a sentient species, and they will just continue consuming them anyways. They themselves are just giant intelligent necromorphs, unfeeling, uncaring, and completely ravenous. So what does a typical Brother and Moon look like? First and foremost, they are massive. Calling them a moon isn't just, you know, a crack at them. They are literally as large as a moon. They possess tentacles that can stretch several thousand miles in length. When the Brethren Moon is killed on Tal Volantis, its tentacles can be seen in the distance taller than the largest mountains. For comparison, Tal Volantis is about your average sized planet, as it seems humans have no problem walking there. It would be like walking up to a giant beach ball. That's how large they are. They also possess three glowing eyes. Possibly the worst part about the Brethren Moons, however, is their jaws. The moon appears that it will eat the crust off a planet, the necromorphs still converging, or really any living creature that attempts to resist. They possess massive teeth, and just honestly, they look like... I don't even think a mother could love that face. So, strangely, evidenced by Isaac tearing the key out of the Brethren Moon's mouth, organs are brought with it. This suggests that the creature does have a working body, and it does undergo bodily functions, even though it's composed of multiple different individuals. The intelligence of a Brethren Moon is unmatched. So intelligent, in fact, that they are able to communicate telepathically with one another across vast distances. The species that become spacefaring must be pretty smart to accomplish this, even with all their technological advances they are still not able to alter the plans that the moon has set in store for them. They will fall one after the other regardless of what they do. The only species that was really able to make somewhat of a resistance uh, to the process was the Tal Volantians. They built a machine during an outbreak that ended up freezing the moon and stopping the event. However, they ended up killing their entire species off in the process, but it would keep the galaxy safe for a time, and perhaps another species could arise. Their sacrifice was in vain, however, because classic humanity came and screwed everything up. 
The brother moose trick entire species into unwittingly serving their purposes until it is time to harvest. Even after being frozen, the moon still sent out a signal to the other markers to guide other individuals and hopefully they would come and make it whole or turn it off further tricking that individual species into releasing it. This can be seen when Isaac and Carver wake back up from killing the moon. They assume that the signal should stop and it should be over. However, to their dismay, the brother and moon had actually contacted and awoken the other moons who are now on the move. The moons talk to Isaac and they seem to make their intentions known to him subtly as if they were trying to follow him back to Earth, when in reality their real purpose was to stop him from returning and warning Earth of the moon's approach. Ultimately, this spelled the end for humanity, and the galaxy remained just dead space. So, I promised you some theory on the Brother of Moons, right? So, let's look at what they are. A giant moon-shaped creature. But everything must come from something. The moons form a network of moons that appear to wipe a galaxy clean, and perhaps even further than that, through their connection with the markers. So, this poses the question, which came first, the markers of the moon? Bear in mind that we are treading a little outside of canon here, but it is my belief that the marker actually came first, and here's my reasoning. Humanity has many times created things that help us in one way, but are detrimental to us in other ways. The car, it has helped in life astronomically, but it is now affecting climate change at an alarming rate, which also could make us go extinct if we aren't careful. Nuclear power, while it's awesome for powering homes, you can create bombs out of it, which could also wipe us out, as they release a ton of energy on the spot, and you can die just from exposure and it does cause cancer. And the biggest one, fire, our ultimate helper throughout pretty much all of our caveman days and existence. It can burn us, destroy mass amounts of property, and be our downfall. To quote a psychologist by the name of Carl Rogers, what is most personal is most universal. Basically meaning that in life, if bad things happen to you, they are actually probably happening to a lot more people than you might imagine. So let's just apply this on a galactic scale. Let's say just like us, a species is strapped for resources in competition with say other races in the galaxy long ago and it gets an idea. It creates material that will put out energy from the universe for its own utilization. Collectively, this would have seemed like a great idea, but after the activation and spreading, only then did the ancient species begin to realize that their citizens were beginning to be driven insane anyone who was close to this power source, mainly starting with those who were really close by. Over time, the signal spreads and eventually the power from the universe has driven most of them to the point of suicide or death, or even just pure insanity. Then something begins to happen. This collective mindset from this species now has begun to transform these creatures with one purpose. This continues on and becomes the first brethren moon. This hive mind speaks one language, has one thought, but is derived from all the minds of the ideas of the original creator species. Then, let's say thousands of years pass, it's only a matter of time before the other species of the galaxy begin to find these leftover relics and utilize them as a power power source. Over time, this infection spreads to more and more races until finally all the original firsts of the galaxy have been wiped out and turned into moons. Due to the similar mindset, the utilization of the signal, they begin to communicate with one another. From here, we have a dead space universe. The moons have stripped it clean of life except for maybe a few holdouts. The Milky Way galaxy is their own personal farm where they cultivate species for slaughter create more moons, it is truly a dead space. Like I said though, that's just my theory on it. It's not exactly canon, but it seems to kind of add some more info, you know, rather than just the moons have always existed. I don't think the moons have always existed. I think that they were created and there had to be the original, I guess, alpha moon or whatever. So that about does it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed my video going over the Brethren moons. What did you think about my theory? I'd love to hear it down in the comments. Also, if you did like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope to see you in the comments. Thanks for watching guys and as always I will see y'all in the next one.